Sarah's here, physical therapist. You can find me at movementthinker.org. Today we're going to cover hip girdle strengthening and very specific, a muscle that sits out on the outer side of the hip. It's called the glute med. It doesn't really matter what it's called, but it's a small muscle that sits on the hip. This muscle is very important for stability. There's research to show that if there's a weakness in this muscle, it can increase your risk of having back issues. Okay? And also, if this muscle is not strong enough to support your body, what we'll tend to see is when you pick up this one foot, your pelvis will drop. And so you'll tend to see this little wiggle of the pelvis when that muscle can't stabilize yourself. Everybody gets a kick when I walk like that in the clinic, but it's the easiest way to show it, and it mimics how patients tend to walk when these muscles are weak. So we'll cover some basic strengthening. Okay? There's a, a physical therapist out there out of... University of Southern Cal, Chris Powers, uh, Chris Powers, okay, this is very few people that I do this for, uh, Chris Powers is one of those people, and so he's the knee guy, a um, lot of research on patellofemoral pain syndrome, uh, also if there's a weakness in this hip muscle or poor motor control of the knee, which may involve that hip muscle, uh, we tend to see patients with knee pain get better if we just work on those mechanics, right? Uh, and so, yeah, this is some of the research from Chris Powers. But one of the things that, that he will cover in the clinic at times is, can you hold a straight leg raise, which I'm going to show you here in a second. And so if I'm on the table on my side, can I raise my leg up and slightly behind the plane of my body with my pelvis rolled forward? Can I hold this for one minute? If this is easy for you, you may not need to do any of these exercises. If the answer is no, I'm going to show you how to progress to this position today. So first, in order to strengthen the hip, we have what's called isometric based exercises, which means strengthening with no movement. Okay, And one of the ways that you can do an isometric exercise is simply to go against the wall. If you have trouble with balance, you might want to hold on, but to go against the wall and push your foot into the wall without any movement, right? I'm not knocking this wall over. So you push your leg into the wall without any movement. To make this exercise a little bit harder, oh, there's some research behind isometrics. When you strengthen a muscle through a certain range, like an isometric, I'll use my elbow for example. If I do isometrics in this position, I might get a little stronger here, I might get a little stronger here. It tends to be about 15 degrees around that angle that you're holding. So if I'm holding this angle, I might get a little stronger here, and I might get a little stronger out there. Okay? One of the ways to make this exercise harder is to just simply step away from the wall a little bit further, because now I have to kick my leg through a larger range of motion, and I start strengthening a different portion of the range. Okay? Heads up. One of the reasons why I like doing the standing version of oh, always when I go to pick things up, it's a squat, right? it's, it's almost always. Um, one of the reasons why I like to do the standing version, gravity doesn't play as much of a role when you're standing versus when you're lying down. You're not working through as much of an arc through gravity when you're doing this versus when you're lying down. Lying down, you're working through a strong arc of gravity when the motion initiates. So I like to start off here. If the person cannot even do this, well, then we have to transition to lying down completely and we'll take gravity out of the equation. And so from here, I'll tend to start it lying on their, their back so they get a better idea of what the movement looks like. It's just straight out, straight in. I'm not a huge fan of this position because it also works the muscle on the front of the leg in order to slide the leg back and forth, right? Because gravity is pushing down on the leg. So I actually have to lift my leg a little bit in order to do this motion. But it at least teaches the movement first. Once they understand the movement, go on to your belly, and now kick your leg out to the side and come back. Because now you have to lift your leg a little bit up against gravity in order to slide your leg back and forth. This kicks on the muscle of the hip because that small muscle raises the leg, rotates the leg, and kicks the leg out to the side. So this is actually a pretty good exercise to do for this, but it's a little harder. Okay. And then finally, you work your way to this position. If you can only hold for one to two seconds up until you can do this for up to one minute holds. Thanks for watching.